Hey everybody, back to the lights. So I got the front light wired up. There's 24, I think, LEDs to do my bumper, my markers, and my headlights. It's 24. So small area of the truck, small percentage of the lights. I think I got like 42 or 44 more LEDs that I'm gonna have to wire up. Now, if you look at this, the way this truck is, with all these lights on here, um, it would look silly if I lit some up for brakes, some for blinkers, some for markers. I really like the overall design, and I want them all to light up. Well, the Tamiya MFC-01 doesn't do that. However, I think I can. So, I'm a little LED retarded, so I've been reading about these things off and on now uh, for quite some time as I've been preparing to finish up this truck. Um, and I think last night, I finally got a grasp on it enough to make it happen so <clears throat> what I want to do is I want like left blinker right blinker brake light and all of them light up for the marker lights so dual intensity LED sounds simple right uh, I'll put a resistor on some stuff but I don't know what's inside that MFC 01 and I don't really care too much so what I'm gonna do is to simplify things, I'm gonna run them off of my BEC that's already in here that runs my servos, which is 5.1 volts, and I'm gonna make a circuit card, or at least try to make a circuit card, that will uh, do as I command. So, like I said, I already started some, some stuff here. So this is the basic concept. Now, I'm not a wiring, I'm not an electrical engineer. I don't really know all the symbols. I might be able to read some of them, but I don't know them enough to draw them out. So let me explain this concept to you guys here. So I'm going to take one and plug it into a running light. Take another one, plug it into a blinker, plug one in the other blinker, plug one in the brake light. Those plugs will then run to the circuit board. And on the circuit board, what it's going to do is have a relay at each one of those so it goes in boop and tells us I'm on and opens power so then I'm gonna have my power coming from my uh, BEC in and when this turns it on it's gonna turn it on which is then gonna flow out my circuit card to my contacts and so for my running lights since they're all gonna be running lights this one is gonna in turn be feeding all the rest of them too and what's going to happen is I'll put a resistor for each pair of LEDs on the board uh, because I'll explain that in a little bit. And then it'll run to each LED. Now this will then continue on with a diode to all my other circuits. So that way they will all light up, right? Now... Here's some complications in it. First, from what I read, you can't just do this and expect that board to be okay with it. So some kind of voodoo magic happens and you have to put a projection circuit, which is using a Zener diode or a switching diode to go kind of backwards the way you normally wouldn't, I guess. Uh, so somehow that makes that okay. Uh, I don't know the full understanding of that, but for whatever the case, when this switch is on and off, something with the immediate power cutting off with that, it'll build up or whatever and needs to be able to flow back or something. So that's a thing, and that's what I'm going to do. So I have some of those. Let's give you the part number and show you what I'm talking about here. So I found this information about the protection circuit and the majority of what I'm doing here kind of on a French website, which... You know, people say it sounds like you're speaking French. That's how I felt about LEDs before this. Well, then I had to uh, learn about them actually in French. So that was quite interesting. Uh, luckily for us, Google can translate a website. So it wasn't actually in French. It was just funny English. <laughs> so here's my Zener diodes that I got. Got them on Amazon. It was like a hundred pack for like nothing really. It was like pennies on a dollar, whatever. I don't even no to mention it was a couple dollars for this pack maybe so the part number is 1n4148 again 1n4148 now i don't need all of these i really only need four but 
I couldn't find just four, and this pack was cheaper than any other pack of less than 100, so why not just buy the pack of 100? All right, now, from all my other diodes, which you'll see, so I'm going to have one feeding from this to each one of those other circuits, and those are right here, rectifier diodes. So part number 1N4004. So these can handle up to 400 volts, and one amp can pass through them safely. Uh, again, same thing as that. They're a couple dollars, whatever. Um, so that's what I'm going to use. So now for those, for these, uh, I could be wrong here, but I will need one everywhere. So for each place this feeds to these LEDs, to each one of these sockets, I'll need a diode. So that'll be one, two, three, four, five, six. So that'll be like 12 diodes that I'll need, I believe. Now, I'm going to look into this. I might need more. As we lay out our circuit board, I'll really figure that part out uh, when I see where everything touches and crosses and goes together. So that's the basics for this one circuit. So each one of these circuits is going to work the same as that circuit, the difference being that this is going to feed into it. <clears throat> now, how's that going to work with a dual-intensity LED? Well... For that, I need to know about my LEDs. So we need to do that and figure out resistors. So this is, again, where I'm mostly retarded. But all my LEDs, the red and the orange, seem to go off of 2 to 2.2 volts. So uh, if I stack them in pairs, that gives me 4.4 volts maximum. And I'm going to be feeding them 5.1 volts. So I will need a resistor just to make them work. So. Apparently, I don't know how it, all the wizardry, but if you uh, send that thing, I could hook one of those up with a 5.1 volts as long as I had a big enough resistor. So the resistor, I don't know if it drops voltage or if it just modulates the current, but apparently from everything I've read, it's more like the current is the, uh, the killer of the LEDs, and that's what you need to regulate. So I can run those like that as long as I have resistors. So to be able to now if you don't put a resistor It's just all that current's gonna flow right through it, and they're just gonna burn right out So you have to regulate the current apparently um, And so from everything I've read these can I think their maximum they're like supposed to be super bright or whatever and their maximum is 20 milliamps they can go through them, and they'll put out whatever mega gigalumens of light or whatever i don't freaking know um so now let's assume i want them dimmer and i give them less current i'll need a bigger resistor so a bigger resistor will limit that so i don't i didn't do any testing on them again this part is me poking and hoping so don't take my word for that this may change later in the video but it'll be a simple change so let's assume 10 milliamps which is half of that is going to illuminate less brightly than 20 milliamps. So to run two of these, I would need a 120 ohm resistor. And that would give me half of that, 10 milliamps. Now, if I want to parallel them and do the dual intensity, to make them brighter at 20 milliamps with the two of them hooked up, that would be 55 ohms, I believe, is what I would need. So uh, now I can go to any ohm as long as it's bigger than that requirement. So 55 ohms would uh, be to light these up with 10 milliamps, I think. Um, could be wrong there. And like I said, we'll find out later when I actually try this out. <clears throat> so that tells me that I need 120 ohm resistor for each string of LEDs to operate running lights at a reduced intensity. Now I need a 55 ohm resistor for each string to operate blinkers, which will be a brighter, a higher intensity than each one of those. Now, it doesn't just mean I can put a 50-something ohm resistor on there, right? Because this is something else I learned. Power, it's obviously coming from the same source, the same battery. So if I have uh, 
120 ohm resistor coming out here to a diode that'll feed to that to light the string or I mean a diode and then a resistor and then feed out whichever way um, and then I send power here and I have a 50 ohm it doesn't just use the 50 ohm now it's a combination because now the resistors would be in parallel so there's a funny thing that apparently they do when you do that uh, so if I have, let's say, a 470, no, I'm silly here. Let's use what I'm using. So 120 ohm resistor. If I hooked them up in series, I have another 120 ohm resistor. That gives me a 240 ohm, right? Well, that's not what I'm doing. I'm going to be doing parallel, inadvertently by design. So if I have a 120 ohm resistor, the way that works is something like this so if i have each one is one over 120 and then that's divided by one so if i have two 120 ohm resistors that then gives me it's something like i think 59 point blah 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 blah, blah. um I did the math inside with the calculator, which is being tied up right now here, so I can't do all that and show you, but this is what it is. So you take one, divide it by 120, multiply that by two, take that number, divide it by one, and that'll tell you what you're left over with, which would be this. So it actually almost a little bit more than cuts those two in half. Now, if I had a 55 ohm, it would be here and the 20, 120 ohm, I would have less than 55 ohms of resistance. It would be significantly less. Um, I think it was like 50 or I'm sorry. I think it was like 20 or 30 or something ohms, which if I'm doing that, then that would send more than the maximum 20 milliamps through my LEDs and burn them out. So I don't want to do that. I want to keep it legit. So it turns out that for all of my resistors, I will need 120 ohm resistors. <clears throat> so what that's going to do is... When my blinker is just my blinker, my running lights aren't on, my blinker will be blinking at the reduced intensity. My brake light will be brake lighting at the reduced intensity. When I turn on my running lights, they will turn on at the reduced intensity. But when I combine the running lights and any or all of these functions together, that second function, the blinker or the brake light, will operate then at a higher intensity because of its reduced ohms with the, by default, parallel resistors. Does that make sense? Kind of does to me. Uh, so the next thing we want to do is start designing a circuit board. So, I am not a software guy. That's like more math for me and whatever. I like machines. I can see how one thing operates from A to B. That's how this kind of stuff even works to me, because it's like a machine. I open a valve, the water flows through, right? Put a regulator on it, slows it down. I can, I can deal with that. But what I can't deal with is arbitrarily clicking and memorizing stuff. That takes much longer to learn, much more difficult to understand. So the easiest way for me, this is a complicated circuit because of the number of things on it. But... It's a simple circuit. So the complicated part is going to be determining how to get from A to B without crossing paths. So I do have a circuit board here that has, it's big. I'm going to have to end up obviously cutting it down. <clears throat> uh, and it has uh, copper on both sides. So if I need to, I can always jump to the other side to cross a line or something like that. Um, and... What I'm going to try and do, because it's not going to have the soldered through connections, I'm going to try and either solder these uh, flat on the top and only go through when I need to pass through with a jumper or something. But like I said, first got to draw it to make sure I can get it where I want it, and that'll fit in the footprint that it needs to fit into. Um, so that's that. Let's start drawing, huh?
and then each of the others are going to really work the same. So I really don't need to draft them out like this. <clears throat> so now, let's take my actual board and try and make that a thing. Because now the trick is going to be, well, can I make it that way? So here's a trick I learned about this stuff. So this is circuit card stuffs. It's, uh, what is it called here? I got it on the Amazon. I got a big one, so hopefully I can screw up a couple times. If you notice, it's both-sided. So this is a uh, circuit board, FR4 glass epoxy resin, one ounce, 0.0014 copper, eight by 10. Part number for this piece here is PCB2810. I don't know if the N-O period is part of it, but PCB2810. That's what I'm using here. Boom, boom, boom. All right. So, now, here's where more science experiment comes in. Ferric chloride. It's a copper etchant solution. And what's going to happen is, I've read, I haven't done, this is, again, just for fun and experimentation as well as a purpose. If I use a regular Sharpie on this, if I use a regular Sharpie on this, it will act as a shield and protect that from eating it. So, what I want to do is I want to draw my actual contact pass with this Sharpie on here and then i'll dip this whole thing and let it soak in that and it'll eat off all the other stuff and i'll be left with a circuit card exactly how i want it All right, there we go. Now I got for my six brake lights, my blinkers, and my uh, <sighs> other thing. That looks confusing, doesn't it? All right, so I need to drill those dots. All right, now if you look, if I put my relays in, boom, they'll line up. And then if I put my plugs in, bam, those will line up. <clears throat> now, these will pop through the back, and I'll solder them to the back here. So, that being said, now I need all my traces on the back for my negatives. So now my circuit card needs a name. I'm going to call it the Kinetic Auxiliary Remote Light System. Uh, for short, I suppose we'll abbreviate that. You know, we acronym everything these days. The CARL System. So now that we have our CARL system here, let's uh, see if we can't etch this.
So let's keep that submerged for about 15 minutes and let it do its thing. Let's keep agitating it. And each time you agitate it, you see more and more stuff gone. You know what? He's not touching anything. He's probably all right to just be there. I'm gonna rinse her off. <clears throat> see what we got. So alcohol takes Sharpie off. Let's take Sharpie off. <clears throat> Initial looks is that everything's there on both sides. You can see where my Sharpie kind of overlapped all the ink spots. Uh, but for the most part, it looks good. The next thing I want to do is get everything tinned. So to tin it all, I need some flux. I need to get some flux where I want to get some solder. <clears throat> so now that it's all tinned, now we can start putting things on it. And his negative also gets a little dab dab. Now, like I said, this will need a Zener diode, right? So let's get us a Zener diode. And it goes seemingly backwards. So normally my electricity would flow from my positive to my negative. So normally I'd want it to go that way. But since this one, I want it the other way. For some reason, we're going this way with it. So, what I'm going to do here is get this negative on. Well, yeah, let's get the negative on here. And then we'll get our positive. So I'm going to cut the negative side down to where I want it. Boom. Get some flux on it. Let's tin that. I'm put it right here. And then let's make it so. And now it's so. So that's our protection circuit right there. All right, so now for my main power, this splitter, if you remember, came with this LED system in the truck, um, but I didn't need it in the truck, so I'm going to use it for this. Boom. Boom. First component installed. Boy, this is exciting. So I'm gonna do that with the rest of them now. All right, now time for some resistors. So it turns out resistors can go either way. They resist both ways. Kind of thought that, wasn't sure. Uh, and I do not have enough. I ordered more yesterday when I realized which ones I thought I would need. So I ordered a kit that will have a whole array, so if they're not the ones I need, I can always try again later. Um, so I want to <coughs> get enough of this together that I can test it out and make sure that it's going to work before I go through the trouble of waiting all that time and all the time of soldering all the stuff together just to find out it doesn't work. All right, now it really doesn't matter which one of these connects to which one of these, they just need to connect. Solder, there we go. Boom, so there 
is one of my little towers. So you see each resistor goes to a diode that then goes to this lily pad. Now I need my plug. There we go. We'll get that crap off of there. So now let's get these plugs. So how do these work? I got an empty hull of a plug. Crap. And here I have all my contacts in a bag. So they all come in one big string. There's my contacts. All right, so let's get him where he goes. Let's make sure that's twisted nice. Let's hold this so it doesn't fall out again. We'll pass that through until our insulation's in. And then we'll crimp this, squeeze it, and it's crimped on the wire. Now, the insulation one's a little bit bigger, so we go up to the next size, and then we just crimp it. I believe it goes like this and then you jam it in there and it clicks in so it's in and this one the same way so the big the big bulbous part goes out I don't know if you can see that but the one side has the big thing hanging out then you do that and jam it in there they're the same ones that Tamiya uses I wanted to do that for simplicity. All right, so I do need the running lights, 16. And I need that blinker that I plugged in, 23. So this one, I may fry the one connection point here. Well, the two, the running light and the blinker. I may fry the whole board. Uh, or the last alternative is it works as desired. So right when I plug in the BEC, they're already powered. So I must have used the normally open relay. All right, so coil, pull two, normally closed. Pull two is normally open. Well, that's, I think, what I did there. So I think it's getting power all the time because it's normally closed. Okay, so it turns out I messed up. So the open relay, I want normally open. So I did this little test here to connect it to the normally open. So that way it should be closed when this is actuated, when the light's actuated. Um, and if you look, boom, my lights come on. That doesn't. All right, well, what happened there was one, first I had connected to my normally closed it needed to be to my normally open so i went and i broke all those contacts uh but then turns out uh i had the wrong relays so i checked they weren't working so i double checked the data sheet those relays i had the wrong ones they were like 120 uh milliamp really relays this won't power 120 milliamp through an led However, one thing I'm noticing is they're not quite as bright as I would like them to be. All right, so I've decided I'm not gonna solder anything more onto here until I get those resistors. Reason being, or until I get the resistors and my uh, relays. And the reason is because I just tested across the coils on that and I was getting 360 or across the contacts. So 360 ohms resistance when it's closed means it's the same as one of these. So really when I get these new ones, relays, I don't know what they're gonna be. 
and what they're going to do. So what I want to do is I want to test them with the lights, make sure it works as I want it to work uh, before I move onward. So we shall see what happens there. Uh, but for now, it seems like in concept it will work. I just need to wait on those last few things so I can finish soldering this guy up. And on that disappointing bombshell, see you next time.